Hello everyone and welcome back to the garden. Today I wanted to take the opportunity really quickly and talk about how to grow anemones. Now I've been growing anemones for several years now. The first anemone video that I actually made, I made it way back probably five years ago now and at the time and even still uh, there weren't really that many videos about anemones. I mean there were people planting them and showing them how to plant them in the soil but you never really got to see the actual results of the plants actually growing. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. We'll get into those um, a little bit later. But in general, before we even start, you want to be able to decide when you're actually going to plant these. For some reference, I am here in Kentucky. I am in zone 6B7. Um, my winters get pretty cold. At least I think they're pretty cold. Our lowest temperature is down to about zero degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's like uh, negative 17 C or something like that. And um, these flowers are very, very hardy to cold. That's a very important thing to remember when growing anemones is that these plants like cold weather. They prefer the weather to be cold. My first anemone bloom this season opened up around February 17th. Just to give you some perspective, my last frost date is usually about the first week of May. So, uh, these are able to handle the cold weather and they will bloom very very early from a fall planting of course if you live in you know uh, somewhere above zone six or something like that it may be better to plant these in early early spring I just really wanted to make this video because I see a lot of people starting their anemones now and it's honestly a little bit late again depending upon where you live so I kind of want to bring some light to the fact that these are such cool hardy plants because of course I want you guys to be successful hopefully a lot of people will watch this video and the uh, magic of the YouTube algorithm will start to promote our channel who knows uh, we can only hope for the best so uh, getting right on into this video once you have your anemone corms and you've decided when you're going to plant them, you have a couple of options when starting them. When you first open up the package, they look like little dried up little, just little rocks, uh, basically. Some of them will be weird shaped. Some of them will kind of look like little teardrops. It doesn't really matter so much I've found which direction you plant them. The uh, roots kind of grow and find their own way. Um, you can soak these. A lot of people suggest soaking these. I've seen people suggest soaking these 24 hours. I definitely would not do that. At most, I soak my um, anemone corms maybe four to six hours because the thing about anemone corms is they do have, um, they do tend to rot. If the conditions aren't absolutely ideal, they can rot. Um, so, I know some people suggest using an aerator, like a fish tank bubbler or something like that. Listen, uh, take it from me. I've tried that. I've done it. I've done it all in the past. Um, there's no reason you need to make this any more complicated than it should be, okay? Um, just regular water. Soak them for a little bit if you choose to soak them. Uh, here's the honest truth. In the past, I have had a little bit of issue with rot before when I soak these. And this past season, I grew 250 anemone corms. I did not soak them. I just planted them up in a tray, as you'll see here a little bit later. And every single one of them grew. It's the first time every single one of them grew. Didn't even soak them. Just I was in a rush, potted them up. Um, you can also pre-sprout these, I should mention. Um, using like a mixture of moss and uh, darkness and things. But I don't, I personally don't know how to do that. So not going to go there. Personally, don't have any experience with it, so I always try to, you know, tell what I know. So what I'm going to do here in the fall, this is usually about the last week of October, I'm just going to take these anemone corms and I'm putting them in a tray of uh, moist potting mix. Now, um, nothing special, this is just the potting mix that I got from the home improvement store. I'm going to space these out a little bit and put the pointy ends up, whichever ones have a pointy end, not all of them will. Um, again, it's not a big deal. And then I'm just going to cover this with potting soil, you know, top this off, make sure these are, I guess, underground. I don't know how I would explain that. Um, really not, not anything too crazy. But uh, what I do want to make sure I pay attention to are the temperatures. The ideal temperatures to get these to sprout are about uh, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and about 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit 
at night. That is very, very important. If those conditions are met, they will begin to sprout within about a week or two weeks. And as you can see, I even transplanted mine into my flower beds. This is in the fall, again. When they just had a little bit of growth, you see these little tiny um, leaves just starting to kind of curl off away from that corm. I'm not planting them deep. It's not, these really are a plant that um, once they get a good start, they really are tough and hardy and robust. And um, you know, you kind of mistreat them a little bit. Um, it wasn't very long before these really started to kind of take root and uh, begin to establish themselves for the winter ahead. As you can see here, I just made a low tunnel. All this is is Agrabon 50. Um, it is a frost blanket and I've just made a small low tunnel under um, to cover these plants. Now, the main reason I'm doing this is to kind of get these plants and protect these plants through the coldest part of my winter season. In general, I find that anemones uh, grow pretty well down to temperatures about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the temperatures dip below about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when I start to cover them. And, uh, you know, of course, you can open and close the cover as you please during the day if it's a sunny day. Um, really is just a process of trial and error and again if you live somewhere a lot warmer during the winter than i do then you might not even need a row cover at all or if you live somewhere a little bit cooler um, you might need to add a little bit more protection it really is just a process of learning what works and what does not work there in your own yard you know uh, everybody's yard is different uh, but for me, it only took about one season to kind of figure out what conditions these anemones really like. I don't really do much in the way of fertilizing until they start to bloom in the springtime. These are just going to overwinter in this state, uh, nice and green and lush. And then when the spring finally does arrive, we can start uncovering them and removing those row covers. We can start feeding them a little bit if you would like to. Um, I don't really start feeding mine at all, honestly. I just make sure that my bed is very very well amended um, in the fall when I plant them. Of course, if you're planting these in spring, you just, you know, plant them out, I would say as soon as the soil can be worked because they can handle those cool temperatures. And we want to make sure that they have a nice long establishment period because if you're planting in the spring, um, those flowers and the flower size is going to depend greatly on how well your plants were able uh, to become established before um, the flowering was actually initiated. Really, you know, a really cool flower to grow, especially, you know, early in the season when there isn't much blooming. I think these are always one of the very first flowers to start blooming for me. Usually these uh, start blooming about the same time as my pansies that I also overwinter in the hoop house. And uh, some of the very, very early season daffodils will also be blooming at the same time as these flowers as well. I always get excited whenever I start to see the flower buds start to kind of uh, poke up out of the soil. They kind of emerge from the base of the soil and open up. The first ones, the first flowers I usually find are a little bit short just because, you know, the days are cool and it's just the first ones opening up. But uh, over time, the stems definitely get longer and longer. Since these are such uh, cool season flowers, mine seem to just pop open on, you know, the first warm sunny day, which is really nice. But admittedly, it can be a little bit difficult if you're attempting to grow them for cut flower arrangements and things. It seems like I can almost never stay on top of, uh, you know, getting these flowers harvested and everything. As you can see from this video, my plant spacing is very close together. I would say each corm is about uh, four to six inches apart. I don't use any kind of trellis netting or anything like that because the plants do kind of grow low to the ground and they're very very strong and don't seem to have that much damage from wind or anything like that. In fact another name for these is windflower and I think that's one of the coolest aspects of growing anemones is um, you know once they are in full bloom and we have this beautiful mass of flowers we can kind of just sit back and enjoy them and watch them kind of blow in the breeze. I mean, I don't have a flower farm or anything like that, but I still totally enjoy just growing this kind of collection of these creamy pastel colors that we had in the garden last year. We had lots of these really, really nice uh, pastel kind of lavender purple colors, as well as some of kind of these red mixes and uh, some pure white flowers with a black center that were also very, very pretty, very nice. 
Um, hopefully this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions about my experiences and growing these anemones, um, you know, let me know down in the comments. Like I said, it's been about five years or something since I've made a video about anemones, and I thought it was definitely time to finally update that video and kind of, um, I don't know, bring this one back into focus here on the channel for a little bit. I know the timing is off for this video for a lot of people who do plant in the fall, but if you're planting in the spring this year and, um, you know, just something to consider, uh, maybe your growing zone is ideal for this, or maybe it's not, I don't know, uh, but I did want to share my experience. Overall, I think this one is definitely an absolutely gorgeous flower worth growing and worth checking out. That's about it for this video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I am so appreciative. I really am. As always, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what you guys think. Was it helpful? Um, what experiences do you have? I'm always learning from the comments, which I really, really love. Uh, as always, if you're not a subscriber and you like this video, be sure to hit the little subscribe button. Hit the little bell. The bell tells you whenever we make new videos. It's a great way to keep up with the channel and grow just our little gardening community here. Uh, as always, all the links to everything is down in the description below. Our link to Patreon and our YouTube memberships is there. It helps support the channel. It helps me pay for things like blog fees. And occasionally I get help with editing, which is really, really helpful because let's face it, I am not the most tech savvy person on the planet. Uh, but I am trying to keep learning and keep making our videos better. There's also a link to the blog. Uh, oftentimes you can check out the blog and there would be more information and more pictures about the thing that I've talked about in the video just because sometimes it helps for me to write down that information and kind of organize it much better. As always, feel free to share this video with a friend. It helps us so, so much when we grow the channel. I hope that you're having such an incredible day, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye, guys.